so for the last couple of months I had a really interesting project to work on um, which was to do live foley and sound effects for the Spongebob musical. I found myself using Ableton in a way I've never really used it before. I just thought I'd like to sh share what I kind of did um, and it might be useful to you if you're doing a similar project where you have to launch random sounds. I've done like foley work with animations and video and advertising and stuff like that before but never in the live setting where I was doing it reacting to actual performers on stage to give it that more cartoony effect and uh, yeah it was a really fun project uh, it was with Leeds Conservatoire and the students were amazing all the creative staff were great it was just a really great show when it came together and uh, yeah I was really happy to be part of it and uh, Give me an opportunity to experiment with some stuff. Um, I used a couple of different MIDI controllers with Ableton to launch different sounds, scenes. Some of them I was triggering that would be played. Some of them I had to hold down the button because I was waiting for something to stop. So, um, stop. So I would take my hand off when this certain when the, when the time was right. I had a little Nintendo joypad, USB joypad that I used for Spongebob's walk so I could use the trigger buttons to react with Spongebob as she walked across the stage on each step was like left, right, left, right, left, right. I had various other sound effects there which certain parts of the show were quite fast paced so having it all, everything at my fingertips was um, a good way to do it. Whereas on the launch pad and stuff like that sometimes the buttons were a bit far apart and I'd miss my cue or hit the wrong one. But yeah, I'll go dive a little bit deeper into it. Uh, it might look like a mess, but it does. <laughs> there is logic behind the my color scheme and uh, what I was actually doing on board. And there's probably better ways of doing this, but uh, I found it worked pretty good for what I was doing. And once you ran it a few times with the cast, yeah, it started to make sense. Gradually, gradually got quicker. I knew when the certain moves were coming up. Sometimes then you can compensate for various other stuff, maybe some, just the actor might do something slightly different on stage. But when you know where everything is, it, uh, you can kind of make it work. Yeah, so I divided it into Act 1 and Act 2, and then each row was a scene within the act. And then I, on the script, I had a coloured sticker, a little circle dot as my cue point, where I was expecting if something to happen, so a red dot would be a red square or a red sample on this. Um, different, or, or blue circle meant something else, red circle, whatever, green circle, yellow circle. Um, yeah, just so that on a glance I could see, all right, there's a red one coming up and within that row, the red one, right, okay. I'm on act two, green, right, okay, coming up. So yeah, I'll dive into Ableton now and I'll show you my various MIDI controllers. Favourite being the little Nintendo controller, Spongebob's walks on each one, and Mr. Krabs, Squelch, a little squeak, and a couple of other a couple of other sounds in there. And I, that uses a Max for Life patch, which I'll link in the description. I'll link all the stuff that I use in the description and um, my email address if you want to ask me any questions about it. Yeah, I've never used Ableton before. Um, it can be quite intimidating at first. There's basically two views. So there's this view, arrangement view, more like classic, like Logic or DAW, where you work from left to right and you drag in clips. And then you hit play and start to move across. And if you hit tab, got this other view called session view well basically each row down each column down is a different track which you can have volumes imagine this like a mixer so you can have your guitar bass drums vocals or whatever any track on a multi-track desk and you can load in individual sounds or loops into these little blocks. So I have a ding. This controller is called a launch pad. And this is 
automatically mapped to Ableton by the developer and who built it. So it's specially made for Ableton, although you can map it to any thing that takes MIDI. It just seamlessly works with Ableton. And if you notice, whatever is inside this red rectangle that's going around the edge here, that's what's displayed in the square. So it's eight squares across. So these eight and eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see there's an orange one. So you can see top left is an orange one. Hit play, it's just like a camera. Or I can press here. Same thing, down below there's a pink one. Or I can press the pink one here. You'll notice it turns green when it's playing. Most of the time, on Ableton when it's set up originally, it's all synced to the beat. So it'll wait for a bar to start before it plays. But if you go in, if you ever need to just play it the second you press it, double click the clip, go to this little play icon and change the quantize to none. It won't wait for the beat, it'll just play straight away. And the other option is gate. Do it on so on this bottom left one, which is like a robot noise, which is this one here, because it's in the bottom of my little red cube. I need to hold this down to for to play it, and then the second I let go of my finger, it'll stop because it's on gate mode. So I'll just give you an example. If my finger stops. Stops if I just tap it, and that happens, it just plays for a split second. Same with this, this is just like another example of a button press one. So, as you can see, in, inside Ableton, I have them labeled. I have pre show, scene one, which is all this row here, which equals to all this row here on the launch pad. And if you notice, I've got some on the left and right. This is so I have access for both hands. So I kind of played it as an instrument as I was watching. So I could go on and then suddenly just happen. I could do this, like when someone throws something quickly across the stage. It's just a different sound. The thing about Ableton as well is if you have a clip playing, to stop it, if you do a blank one above or below the same track, so vertically it will stop it playing. But, but one's horizontal can play at the same time. And stop them by going below. So on my one, I had an emergency stop mapped to this button right here. For example, on my MIDI controller, this small nano control, this just comes blank. Not on this map at all, you just have to map everything to whatever you want. So in my case, I wanted an overall master control. So I decided to use this knob here that I could control the volume up and down of my master fader just in case it was an emergency or something happened I had to just cut the sound. If you want to map something, <coughs> make sure in preferences that your um, MIDI controller is all set up. So I can see here nano control, make sure track remote is on and remote are selected. I've done the same for the launch pad and everything. That means they can talk to each other both ways, receive and seg send signals to each other. Yeah, that's fine. So if I go to the top right, click MIDI. And in this case, I want to control the master. So I go down to the bottom right here, click the master icon, and then touch the knob that I want to use, and you'll see a little symbol pop up the bottom right. So 1 slash 23 is my control. And you'll see it pop up on this top left corner. <coughs> So you can see it goes from minus infinity to 6 dB. But I never want it to go to above zero because that's how you end up getting clipping and you can cause damage to your speakers. So if I go into this one and limit it to zero dB, just type zero. Now my fit, I'll just go back over MIDI. Now my fader, bottom right, goes down and all the way up to zero and it never goes past that because otherwise you can go above zero. 
do it for any nearly anything in Ableton. For example, if I want this fader to control the, the, this last fader, go MIDI, the 100 characters. If I go down to the fader, touch it, you can see the same thing. You can put that on zero so it doesn't go above it. Change and now when I move this fader, you'll see it'll change, move on screen. So that's good for live mixing <coughs> if you have multi tracks. So as you can see on my uh, Ableton session, I've got it divided into Act 1, which is this area here, and then below the blue lines is Act 2. So I just, there's, these are just empty clips just so I had a kind of a clear divide. Try to go, I did the same thing, had them labelled. And so what I did is, what, as I read the script and the show went on, I made sure that this box, what I needed was in view. And on the launch pad you can scroll down. And as you see the box scrolls down. It scrolls down the colours. And I would usually try and keep what scene I am on on the top left. So if I was on scene three, keep that on the top left. So scene three is here. Let's see, brown, green, red, red. It's just an easier way to keep, make sure I was following the script and then I'd scroll down as well, just to make sure I was on the top left so I wouldn't get confused. Might seem confusing to look at now, but once you, do it a few times, it's fine. So I'd like right pre-show is in, wait for my cue to go, like, okay, scene one is here. Now I'm ready. Boom, boom, boom. So I'll show you how I did the um, Nintendo controller. So this is handy for when SpongeBob was walking and I had a couple of other things going on. I was able to just do this and watch her as she walked across the screen. And when Mr. Krabs cue came, you can just go like this and whatever other stuff. And you can also use your baby finger if you need to. Just put the finger on at once. So it's quite good. So I used the third party plugin called Gamepad to MIDI, which I found online. And this joypad was just a USB joypad that I bought off Amazon or eBay. And you just drag it into a MIDI track and it just automatically picked it up. So I did it, so it converts your notes into MIDI notes. So I, if you can see on this block here, when I press the button, some of them bright up yellow. So whichever squares go yellow, that's where you need to drag your sample. You just drag it in, you can you just use this one for example. You just drag it into a square, then green, I did. Bonita. So, yeah, the good thing about that is you can go in and do each individual sample, what you need to get, put fades on it, transpose, and bring the volume down if that particular square is too loud. Do some EQ on it. So basically I had these eight tracks, one through eight, to represent what was on the square, squares on Ableton, and then I had one extra track called characters, which is for character noises. And then I could mix these individually if needs to be. 